Well, welcome and good afternoon. I'm Rebecca. I'm from the Solar Thermal Group at the Australian National University, and I'm studying a PhD on um, solar thermal storage. So the particular type of storage that I work with is using um, ammonia as a storage medium and a thermochemical reaction. Um, but obviously, since I'm doing a PhD on that, that's not commercial yet. And today I'm going to be talking about um, different types of solar thermal storage and especially um, molten salt storage, which is a more commercial, well, is a commercial form of um, solar thermal storage that's in plants on the ground at the moment. Okay, so first before I begin um, my talk, seeing as it's on the title slide here, um, there's a bit of, bit of disagreement in the industry as to whether dispatchable is spelt with an ABL or IBL. Um, so I've gone with the half of the papers that say IBL, just in case anyone's wondering. Okay, so I'll give you an overview of my talk. Um, so dispatchable solar power, um, that's what, this is what um, solar thermal storage allows us to do. But I'll just get on to, um, I'll get on to the definition of that in a minute. So right now I'll give you the overview. Um, so I'm going to talk to you about um, concentrating solar power. So I'll just tell you, give you an outline to make you sh make sure you're um, we're on the same page and you know what it is as opposed to photovoltaics. Then I'll talk a little bit about solar thermal, why solar thermal storage is good as opposed to say pumped hydro or batteries. Um, we're a much much more utility scale. Uh, storage than that and then I'll look at molten salt then I'll look at um, my work which is on the ammonia storage and then I'll show you a few photos from um, the big dish concentrators which are at ANU in the group that I work with. Right so this is the um, overview of concentrating solar power so this is a photo of the Andesol 1 plant, which is in Spain. And here we can see the two um, salt storage tanks, but I'll tell you more about that later. The Andesol 1 plant is 50 megawatts in size, as you could see on the slide. And it's interesting, there's um, another, so that came on, that came online last year in October, so October 2008. And um, there's good reason why it's 50 megawatts in size. It's because the Spanish government has initiated a feed-in tariff, which means that you get a premium price if you produce renewable energy and specifically solar energy, but only for plants up to 50 megawatts in size. So this has been pretty good for the storage um, development because it means that um, plants can have a turbine and generator that are rated at 50 megawatts electric. But it doesn't matter whether you produce um, electricity only during the sunlight hours or whether you produce it um, for say 20 hours for the day, um, you still, you'll still get the feed-in tariff if your turbine and generator is rated at 50 megawatts. So um, that's encouraged a lot of companies to develop their storage so they can produce um, more units of electricity for the day and still get the feed-in tariff, which is sold per unit of electricity. Um, so that's a bit about the Andesol plant. We'll just go back to the... So the Andesol, the Andesol plant, the reason it's special is that it's the first plant that's been built... Sorry, apart from, apart from one that was built back in the 80s, it was much smaller scale. It's the first plant that's been built um, that has storage for uh, seven hours operation during the night. So all other plants have been built, all other solar thermal plants that have been built up to this stage have only incorporated storage for say 30 minutes or so to accommodate for cloud, cloud cover. Um, so anyway, I need to get back to telling you what concentrating solar power is. Um, so before I move on from this slide, we'll just I'll just give you some comparisons so you have an idea of how big the 
50 megawatt 50 megawatt station is so a typical coal-fired power station is 2000 megawatts and your home photovoltaic array is about two kilowatts um one kilowatt being so you have a thousand kilowatts per megawatt obviously um and the industry as as i was mentioning before there's a 50 megawatt um limit for plants to to receive the feed-in tariff in spain so there's actually, even though this Andesol 1 is only 50 megawatts in size, there's actually an Andesol 2 and 3 plants being planned and actually built at the moment right next door to them that are also exactly identical and 50 megawatts in size. But now we'll move on and talk, about, talk a bit more about the physics of concentrating solar power. Um, so what I'm talking about at the moment is concentrating solar power, as I just said, or um, solar thermal electric. So the idea is that you have a parabolic mirror, as we can see here, this one's a trough, and the sunlight is concentrated to the focus, which in this case is a line focus, and you have a fluid flowing through the focus, um, flowing through the receiver at the focus, which in this case it's oil, and that oil gets heated up and that's the energy that you use to um, drive your power cycle. Um, you can also have concentrated um, photovoltaics. So you also have the mirror and it's concentrated onto PV instead, but I'm not talking about that in this talk. And I'd just like to clarify that um, I'm not talking about solar panels, the um, silicon based photovoltaics on people's roofs. So now I'll just give you a bit of an overview of the uh, different, there are four main types of uh, reflectors in concentrating solar power. So the first one is par the parabolic trough. And this one was in the SEGS plants in California that were built in the 80s and 90s. Um, also in the Axiona Nevada Solar One plant um, that was Commission, well, it started operating in 2007, and of course, in the Andesol plants that I've just showed you. So, they've got a concentration ratio of about 80 suns, uh, which is so the concentration ratio means the ratio of how much um, sunlight falls on the mirror surface to the area that the sunlight falls on when it's concentrated onto the receiver here. So anyway, we'll um, move on to the next types of, type of concentrator. So this is called the Linear Fresnel Array. Um, and one of the companies that deals with this is called Osra. They, they call it the Compact Linear Fresnel Array. Um, and so it's a compact linear Fresnel Array is basically like the um, parabolic trough, except that it's segmented. So it's broken into sections. So each of these each of these mirrors here that you see um, rotates by itself and so it will rotate to focus light up to the to the um, central receiver here and this mirror will, will rotate this way to focus the light up to the same central receiver. So because they're approximating a parabola they generally have concentration ratios a bit lower so about 80 suns. This one's pretty cool. It's called a um, power tower um, with a heliostat field. So here you've got all these mirrors. This, is, this one here is the um, PS10 plant for Abengoa in Spain. Um, it's 10 megawatts. Um, and it's, right, so the, the power tower, basically you've got all these little mirrors on the ground here and they individually point up to the one central focus. So you can tell here, I'll just go back. Previously with the, oops, that's the wrong way. Previously with the um, linear Fresnel array and the troughs, you had a linear focus or a line focus, but now we have a point focus with the power tower. Um, and so this allows you to get higher concentration ratios up to 1500 suns and also consequently high temperatures. 
So you can do different things with um, this because you've got the higher temperatures. 